everybody remembered that day differently. When it first appeared, most people froze. Many people fled, but others began to follow it. I'm telling you this tale, but it's not just mine to tell. It's part of something much, much bigger. Chapter One, A Whole New World. It happened before it happened, even before it actually was visible to the eye. Many of us sensed that there was a, a, literally a tear in the fabric of reality. I lived in Brooklyn, and I lived in a little apartment. When it happened, I was in Buenos Aires. I was in a cab with one of my dearest friends. I was in my very little small house in Romania. I was in a shoe store buying a pair of black Adidas. I know exactly where I was. I was in bed. I just remember thinking, oh, this is what I've been preparing for. <laughs> I could actually feel the earth splitting below my feet. It was, for me, the most important day of my life. So I'm out in the garden. And I just have this feeling that comes over me of excitement and dread all at once. I feel it before I see it. Then the cab stopped and everything stopped. The people started hopping out of their cars. And yeah, we were in a different world. It felt like in that moment, all the boundaries dissolved. You just know there will be before and after this. You just don't know much beyond that. If you see it coming at you, if you see it chasing you, if you see it waiting for you, if you see it at all, you are blessed. Fear, hope, longing, confusion, um, a real sense of being lost. There's just this feeling of like, oh, it's over. You know, it radically transformed my life. I still feel like I'm completely scarred from the experience. And I began to see things that were invisible to some eyes, but not to mine. I had been wandering for years, looking for home, looking for purpose, looking for some truth that would last. I took odd jobs in odd towns, just to get by. I was on the Golden Gate Bridge. The top was down. The sky was blue. The sun was warm on my face. That's when I saw it. And that's when it saw me. Sources from around the globe are reporting on what appears to be a giant hole in the sky. At the moment, there is no cause for concern. In the days and nights leading up to it, you could sense the tension mounting. There was blood in the streets, bodies in the ocean. Everything was on fire. Something was trying to be born, but something was still not ready. It felt as if the fabric of the universe was tearing apart. We just couldn't see it until suddenly we could. The night before it happened, a friend of mine had come over and I said, uh, you know, it's really quiet. Something, something is really eerie about tonight. And I said, this is, it, it feels like something's about to happen. I've never really thought that a clear blue sky would feel apocalyptic. Not everyone necessarily could understand what they were witnessing. For most of my life, I had been hoping that everybody would quote, wake up. And I'd kind of given up on that actually ever happening. It's being called The Opening. Experts have not yet determined its origin or why it has appeared. The strange duct taping together of the mundane and the cataclysmic all on this one morning. It was a combination of shock and anger and sadness. And I felt confused. And that confusion led me to begin to ask questions. So you can say it was an alternate reality and it seemed unreal, this seemed so unreal, but actually what it seemed was very, very real. A kind of a, an instant terror that brought sparkles of pleasure. 
What I remember most specifically about that day is pulling up into our driveway when we got home and feeling this overwhelming grief. I felt naked. I felt broken into pieces. And like I felt like I didn't know where I was. Yeah, so it's just this feeling of like, this is urgent and we need to find the people that we love like right away. But what I really remember about it is the sense of relief. Like, I feel like there were people that may have never before wanted to or actually went outside and knelt down on the ground and wept in gratitude. Suddenly, I had more relationships to tend to, not just human. The world as we understand it or understood it is collapsing before our eyes. All of a sudden, the rest of the world has tuned in. Some veil has been lifted. Literally nobody knows what it is. And here's the paradox. Everybody knows what it is. Experts are still reeling about what they call the opening. And scientists are concerned it could alter everything from ocean tides to photosynthesis. And here I was worried about the evening traffic. It stretched over hillsides and pulsed above cities. The sheer scale of what it was and what it might mean was more than anyone could hold. We're facing something beyond our ability to respond to. I was really, really acutely aware as I looked around just how unmoored people were, like how much of a shattering was taking place. <laughs> it's interesting because it's so different from what I thought the feeling would be. You know, I've always been like, I'm ready. I'm ready for something outrageous to happen. And when it does, we're all gonna flood the streets with change or I don't know. But what actually happened was everyone was really afraid. So it was no surprise when people came unhinged in their homes or that panic, fear and hysteria swept through the streets. It broke us, all of us, wide open. That kind of worldview shift is terrifying. And it's also something that we all, on some deeper level, long for. I wanted everything to stop. I didn't want anything to continue. I didn't want, I didn't want to hear any sound. I didn't want to see anybody's face. I didn't want to even take another breath because I felt like, it felt like everything had come to an end. Our culture had long evaded its arrival, hoping things would change without us having to. Everyone across the globe could see it, but not all were touched by its otherworldly light. Some people were made whole by it, others were made mad. And you didn't know who was who among your family, your friends, or even in the mirror. The opening has torn down a lot of these rigidified systems of understanding that in a sense kept people sane. Really though, it's not that they kept them sane, in a way you could say that it kept them insane because it kept them immersed in a certain delusion. Once there is a rip in one reality, we can see through into another level that's still real. It's that sense of becoming aware of something else that you'd never considered, that then you have to remodel your view of reality to include. Some people are looking backwards from the threshold, trying to get back to the world that was. Many are just in confusion in the middle, and others are trying to look forward to the world that's trying to come into view or into vision. Well, we've been living kind of in the fantasy or the fiction of isolation and separateness. So what happens when this type of experience settles on us is that those fictions begin to fade and dissolve. And we begin to sense that we are actually entangled with the whole terrain, the whole mess of it all, and the whole beauty of it all. The opening acted like a prism, reflecting our light and our shadows back to us. Its colorful cosmic rays poured into our world, affecting everyone it touched differently, thrusting them into what could only be described as visions.
We have reports that after staring into the opening, people are hearing and seeing things not of this world. So first of all, I just want to share that I don't believe that what I saw was just for me. I saw way too many visions. Let's say, let's say that for a long time, visions would come. I, I would eat visions for breakfast. I just looked up into the opening and it was like I got sucked into this vortex of absolute bliss and love. I can still feel it in my body. It hasn't left me. To stare into the heart of that is to stare into death. It felt almost as if scales were being pulled off of me. And all of a sudden, like, it exploded into oneness, into pure consciousness, into something I'd previously not experienced before. It was so beautiful. And it was devastating when it was time to come back to this world. You find new things when you enter it. You know, like, just do some, enter it at all, I wonder. The opening split the sky in two and tore humanity in half. Those who had seen things quickly became outcasts, labeled as unstable, disturbed, or even dangerous by those still stuck in a story of separation. It has made me ostracized. It has made me lose friends. It has made me um, question my own freaking sanity. No one came back the same after an encounter, but everyone came back to Earth. There was no escaping the burden or the blessing of being human. Trying to um, consolidate, distill that kind of experience back in this place is something else. <laughs> so if you receive a vision, it's not something to ignore. You can't say, hmm, I wasn't expecting that one. I think, I think not, you know, it's, it's, it's a commitment. Science could not explain it. Government could not control it. No algorithm could predict it. But that didn't stop them from trying. Everyone had to choose where to get their information, from the screen or from the sky. As a war between what we saw and what we were shown battled for our attention. So as soon as the, the opening appeared, what's the first thing people do? they look to somebody else to explain what it is. The number of narratives that are flying about what this is and how, how we might be in relationship with it is as varied as there are, you know, human psyches walking the earth. But the media is going to tell us how and why we should be afraid. You saw the propaganda machine really working, right? You really did. And then every once in a while, we'll, we'll, we'll get these hidden mystics that will come out and speak for themselves. There were lots of heated conversations about what do we do next? What do we do next? What do we do next? To the point that we barely even let ourselves get a breath and actually simply feel the impact before the larger narratives took over. Authorities are now calling it a collective psychosis and warning that the light from the opening could in fact alter brain waves and cause mass hallucination. We were looking to one branch of humanity's view of how things were supposed to be conducted, created, aligned. And everybody was supposed to go along with it. And that was part of where the blindness came. Many looked to others for what to do and how to be, yet some bravely trusted their own intuition. It happens to church leadership, it happens to governmental leadership, it happens, you know, now on the internet you just see different thinkers who are able to gather these flocks of people who are like, I feel lost and I don't feel power and you're going to tell me something that makes me feel powerful. Right, without making me grow in any way, without making me contend with myself. What gets in our way is the human. What gets in our way is this imperial order that says everything outside of the rational, everything outside of your way of thinking is the enemy. I think there's been a systematic conditioning of people to not trust themselves. And 
The real message is that all of us need to hone the skills of our own perception. The spell, the hypnosis, the brainwashing that we've fallen under and no one else has done that to us. Yeah, there are like, there's all the propaganda organs and the mainstream media, for example, but we actually are colluding. We're complicit in our falling asleep. Some people are just gonna keep turning away from me. I don't see it. I got my favorite news channel. I'm watching this over here. I'm not looking at the black hole. Don't tell me about it. And then some of us are gonna go and say, wait a minute. Light comes from darkness. What happens if we look into the dark to get the new vision? You, you really got back to your own discernment. There were so many things going on that you kind of just had to go with your own gut feeling. Even if you tried to rely on the experts, how could you? They were all over the board. So in a way, it's, it's, it's forcing us back into this seat of ourselves of saying, hmm, what do I know and where do I know it from? We'd all been well-groomed for what to expect, but no one was prepared for what came next. Our buzzing, industrious, extractive world was mortally wounded by a gash in the sky. I think of what we're going through as a collective rite of passage. Every true initiation has three qualities to it. The first one is that there's a radical separation from the world you once knew. That has certainly happened. We're no longer in that agreed upon flux of business as usual. The second thing is there's a radical alteration in our sense of identity. Who I am, the story I've been told and have been living begins to crack and deteriorate. And the third thing that happens, if we're fortunate, is that you can never go back to the world that was. People began to gather like fugitives far away from the factory floors, to dance, to grieve, to share what they had seen. To discover that there were people who had had experiences like I had, and that sense of recognition kind of washed over me. And I remember thinking like, I'm not alone and I'm not crazy. <laughs> I wanted so badly to step off the wheel, but had no idea who I was outside the marketplace. The clouds looked brighter, the birds sang louder, even the air was alive. Life, once again, was mysterious. It's one thing to have a vision. It's another thing to follow it. The times are urgent, let us slow down. The times are urgent, let us slow down. The times are urgent, let us slow down. I think there's a difference between a pause and a, what I would call, say la. It's called say la, S-E-L-A-H. No one actually knows what it means. I feel that, that it's the place where things get strange. It's, it's a place where we are met by some things greater than ourselves not just a place where we pause so that we can resume those things later on. A sela is not just a resumption of convenient continuity. You don't just resume after a sela. And why is that? It makes it impossible for us to resume things because we are rendered incapable of doing that. I feel the light, the colors that is streaming out of these rifts, this crack, this cavernous yawn. I feel that the things streaming out are not just visual, spectral things. And that if you stand in the light of this, you are tattooed with something. It is inviting us to reconsider what it means to be human. What our activisms do what they risk, what our ways of working enact, what we've been leaving out and what we've been forgetting. It's like rumors of another world are now streaming through this opening. It seems we're at a loss 
you know, with what to do. We don't know how to respond to this crisis. I feel that sometimes the way we respond to crisis is part of the crisis. That the way we try to weave a solution, construct a response to crisis, becomes the problem itself. It's grieving. It's the questions we're now asking. It's the humility we're now feeling. It's the perhaps that now haunts our speech. Whether it closes quickly or not, we've been forever changed by this. Um, and I feel that there's an invitation there. And that invitation is saying, work with me. You can work with me. Use the materials of this to craft sanctuary, to craft um, new questions, to craft celebrations, to craft um, ceremonial inquiries, collective ways of thinking together. Use it to craft uh, a space of silence. Craft a cartography, a project here that allows you to fall. It allows you to stray away from calculated paths. In, um, in working with these materials, maybe, just maybe, the opening will always be with you. And it will never close.
goes on beyond imagination It's a brighter adventure we are on The stars are twinkling Or are they signaling That we're all dialed in And we're all connected We're all connected